It's views and engagement that pay the bills, and for many of us, this is our job. You might not like that it's our job, and you might not respect that it's our job, but it is our job, and we need to treat it like our job if we want to continue doing this. Welcome to the Grey Line, where we're all right and wrong at the same time. And despite all the things 2020 and society as a whole has given us, I think we have evolved in the last couple of years. Sure, we have people that think the world is flat and that racism isn't a bad thing, but aside from the stupidity, we have also learned to appreciate and respect people a little bit more, from complex elements like their sexual orientation to something that shouldn't be difficult to understand, like where they work. However, ironically, it seems like understanding freelance work is as difficult as understanding gay rights. But I can't talk about the second part because... I mean, come on. Anyway, one of the things that I feel we need to stop thinking is the stigma that people doing online content is just a hobby or something that isn't worth considering a job to begin with. Like, for some reason, when we see someone selling stuff on the flea market, we see them as an entrepreneur or someone making a career. Oh look, a hardworking person. Hope they get far. But when we see someone trying to sell art on live or making an online show or offering their services, it's very awesome to just get someone saying, Get a job, you hippie! Like, no kidding. I can assure you that someone could sell artwork online and on a flea market and the treatment will be different for some reason. <laughs> Which is funny considering how for a lot of people, online work was the major source for income due to multiple implications. From simple corporate bullshit that you can't control with doing a good job to just the millennial plague. It's really mind-boggling that people think doing things online suddenly makes the work lazier and worth less value despite taking the same if not more effort given how the competition is, you know, the entire world. If we go back to the artist comparison, the one in the flea market only needs to be sure there's no other seller in the store, while the online one will have to do their best work possible in order to even be listened to let alone getting paid for it. Let's do a quick rundown of it with artwork. Which one of these two is official artwork for Dragon Ball Legends? If your response was anything but neither of them, you will probably start seeing my point a little more. This one is official artwork, and even if you have a favorite among these three, you can't deny the quality of them is quite similar. By the way, I had a hard time finding the artists since these were found on repo, so please, if you can find the artists that made them, put them in the comments so I can pin it, please. Now, luckily, artists from the world of illustrations have definitely earned a lot more respect than other forms of media, to the point where making dramas about it seems like a good business model. However, respecting online illustrators seems more like the exception to the rule when it comes to online creators. And that brings us to the world of media. On one hand, I can understand people still having a hard time processing that this is a career of choice. I didn't know, Joe! I met You're you. out of the Superman Club! What? I am revoking your Superman card! What? what? You don't tease! You don't... Hey, Superman fans, and Wonder Woman's getting three films, and Superman's one film after the goddamn aberrance of this Wonder Woman 2. But there's still a lot of effort being put into it. Now, that's not to say that there aren't people doing content as a hobby, but you can easily tell who is just doing content for the fun of it, and who is actually doing a career here. Let's do another example here with just the visuals. Which one of these two managed to be on television? The answer for this is none of them again, because that MLP short was a fan project. Because even when they get recognized as wonderful content creators, there's a fact of being put as doing things on the internet, which while not a lie, it's suddenly said in a demeanor matter. Like for some reason being higher is way better than starting things by yourself. And while it might say something positive about your social skills to get higher, it really shouldn't mean anything regarding the quality or value of the product. We've heard them all from you're charging too much to I'll pay you with exposure. But again, there's really no reason why that mentality should apply at all. Both pieces of work take time, resources, and dedication through a deadline in order to be achieved. Illustrations, animation, video editing, all are full-on projects that take hours and hours to work at the certain same respect even if you find the person through DMs on social media. And with that, I want to give a specific moment to talk about multimedia creators, also known as YouTubers and streamers, for the most part. Ha! You browse the dark web, now you're getting fingered in prison. Ha ha! What the fuck? I do have the intention of talking more in depth about this in a separate video, but as a content producer that has worked on local news on an actual network, if you have ever told a YouTuber that they should get a job instead of doing videos or streaming, then I'm gonna ask you politely to not speak to me, we're clearly not compatible with each other. 
Unless it's a seasonal project, a lot of the stuff you find in traditional media takes hours and maybe days to even be made from start to finish, which relies on a production team, finding sources, doing research, doing the script, editing, etc. Which shocking revelation isn't that different than what online freelancers do. In fact, sometimes it might be even more difficult because they may take longer to produce something they can consider worth viewership. I mean, this obviously doesn't apply to everyone. There are those that legit just want to pull their stuff on the internet without having any sort of goal. But we put all channels in the same category regardless, causing a certain lack of support. We all have that one or two channels that you know are really showing something special, but either don't get enough awareness or just haven't been able to get their chance on the spotlight. There is at least a 10% of luck you need in this online recipe. And it does suck cause people can make incredible things that couldn't have been made on other means. Call out aside, you can't deny this isn't a common thing. If I can bring an example here, it will be the scenario of Mr. Boss for the Wing here compared to Strange Man. Both of them are channels dedicated to make content related to games from Rockstar, GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, etc. Now I'm not gonna go into which channel should you watch, although I personally think Strange Man makes theory and discussion videos while Boss for the Win is all about hyping things that may or may not exist, but the gap of support both of them have is pretty big which can be pretty demoralizing for someone that tries to be more about quality than about quantity. Seems sorry, Strange Man's videos clearly take more time and effort to make. And I am completely aware that as long as a channel can sustain itself with its following, it doesn't matter who has more or less than you. But most of the people that are aware of that are the ones that respect content creators for being content creators. This mention goes to the people that think that a channel having a ton of subscribers means their content is above the rest. Which isn't always the case or maybe never be the case depending on your perspective on PewDiePie compared to every channel out there. Look, I know that this overall topic is more of a matter of culture and education. Those that have been on the interwebs, either as creators or just consumers, know that online creators are just as important in other forms of creative work. Hell, sometimes we put them in a higher place because of elements that I do plan to talk about in later videos. And those that don't see unlikers as real workers are mainly those that continue to see the internet as a place for fun and social interactions and can see this as a way to make a living. Which isn't quite their fault, we all live in different environments and circumstances, but they need to at least respect the fact that they're doing work and they're taking it just as seriously as those that work on a 9-5 office. And if you're someone that respects creators this way but see people being the opposite, Without telling them to kill themselves, please, for the love of God, just try to show them the way it works. Since they're probably talking from a perspective that just can't see the world that lives on their house's computer. And if they're your strolls, yeah, fuck them, not worth your time. Thanks for listening!